let's start with Star Wars Villainous. I'm always amused by this, where they're like, this is the new Star Wars Villainous. They're like, ooh, are you surprised? I'm like, not particularly. <laughs> There's only so many major villains in the movies. But Darth Maul... Darth Maul is that guy right there. And the I other one is him. Captain Phasma. I which, remember her. She's kind of an interesting character, because they make her out to be, like, this really cool character. And in the movies... Did she do anything Not in the movie? really. I mean, she wasn't... All she did was... She fought of Finn deep. for a while, remember? She did? Oh, that's right. Which one right. is she? She's, She's a really tall Very storm shiny trooper. stormtrooper. With the oh, silver she storm helmet. Oh, I thought it was the, the lady. The a lady, lady in a suit, no. you never see her. No, okay. And she's no. very tall and very shiny, no, like Rome. I was thinking it was the one that... She does a lot of telling people to report to places. I laid off, not in the cover. I wanted her to be like a really cool character. I agree. But they made her not particularly threatening. Anyway, more villainous. Mm. It's a two-player expand-alone? Did you say sp expand alone? That's what it says here in the notes. I hate Ooh. that so much. <laughs> I'd rather eat a chicken butt pie. Well, how about Battalion? This game looks cool. This is from Osprey Games. Oh. And this is from Paolo Mori. And Paolo Mori. Yes. But also Francesco Siracci. Um, and he's best cool known name. for Pocket Battles. Remember Pocket Battles back well, in the actually, day? Actually, that's also Paolo Mori's game. So this is, oh, really, I'm this sorry. is really kind of a... A reworking of that. It pocket doesn't... Battles, yeah, was this little line of, of games. Very small little pocket games, really. And they came out from Z-Man, right, back in the day? And they came out from, like, yes. four sets. There was, was five, the, actually. Five sets? Yeah. They had that many? I, I, I remember there being a few. And so this is a reworking of that uh, into a larger box. And I'm guessing more factions right in the box. It looks Oh, awesome. you're right. There's four. Ah, you know, correct me again. See what happens. Celts versus Romans, Elves versus Orcs, Macedonians versus Persians, and Confederacy, Confederacy versus, versus Union. Union. I remember that one. Mm, yes. Also, I just read it. <laughs> Battalion. <laughs> Everyone saw you just read it. <laughs> anyway, this game looks cool. It's from Osprey. The, you know, Osprey knows what they're doing. They're pretty good with the armies. I like... the This, does, this looks actually quite a bit different from Pocket Battles. Pocket Battles yeah. did not have four-way connecting things and cards. Sure, sure. I think it's more of a spiritual successor type thing. Well, it's also had some... There's, it's, <laughs> it, it was many years ago that that came out. Paul Amore has made a bunch more games. The other designer, I'm sure, has grown in their expertise as well. I'm very much looking forward to this. All right. Then we have Arkham Horror, <gasps> the role-playing game. Oh. <gasps> what?! So Arkham Horror, the role-playing game. This will be a box starter set coming out at Gen Con. We'll see how popular Sorry. this is. I can't see it. It, 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 it <laughs> might be. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're reading too slow. What? <laughs> All right. There's a 48-page adventure book, five character portfolios. I mean, to me, this is, they have such a, they have their own universe, right? Their own sure. Arkham Horror universe. Yes. So, like, ooh, we need some characters. They have hundreds, probably, yes. at this point. Yes. So a lot of this, and a lot, I mean, they've always written on all their games. Like, you read Eldritch Horror, a great game. Um, you read Eldritch Horror, and they have, like, really long backstories on everything. Sure. So. This is one, it kind of reminds me of crowd surfing yesterday when we were talking about the vampire. And I was like, oh, this is one that I think would be kind of cool, you know, to get into. You've always been intrigued by it. Um, and then you kind of, you said, hey, watch out, because... The lore can be a lot, you know, it can be overwhelming to get Vampire, into. So yeah, yeah, because there's yeah, so yeah. much. That's what I feel like this could be, but it's one that I'm familiar with that lore because I played so much. So I'm like, yeah. But this one I think is is better in that sense because you don't have to know because it's that's kind of the point. You come in, you're like, I don't know all this lore, and they're like, well, of course, no one does. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, well, but even that. the characters, like, I'm going to recognize okay. them from all the games I've played. But I'm you're gonna, some, you know, some ignorant human is the point. In Vampire um, Masquerade, you are a vampire who in knows one of the families, all of this. who knows yeah. all this history, who knows all this stuff. It's like you need a deep, deep bench to of knowledge. Yeah. This is like, oh, unknowable cosmic horror. Oh. Ah, this is interesting. Maybe we should play an RPG on the channel, Tom. And if we ever do such a thing, perhaps it could be Arkham Horror the RPG. Um... Incidentally, and this is not in the news, they announced an expansion for... We'll, we'll try to get the news next week. They announced an expansion for um, the Arkham Horror 
Battle, um, Battlestar Galactica. What was that called? Oh, that's oh, right. Um, unfathomable. 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 That kind of blew right. my mind when I saw I that. I know. Like, does anyone play Unfathomable? Somebody does at FFG. Fantasy Flight just has a few buttons. One of them is Arkham Horror content. They're like, they oh, 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 oh. They press a button and there's <laughs> a Arkham Horror content. Maybe comes they're out. haunted. Which me. By Ooh. some sort of eldritch Ooh, things. I'm bad. All right, Hero Quest. So Dungeon Crawls are in right now. Mm -hmm. And there's the Ogre Horde uh, Quest Pack is available for people to get. Hmm. And there you go. That has ogres. Hmm. Wow. That is old world news. All right, well, let's talk about old stuff here. Hero Scape. So we already knew that Renegade was making Hero Scape, but they've now given a ton of details on it. So you can see the terrain looks to be pretty much exactly the same. I imagine it's going to feel different in there. And they have... In their own words, five new items. That's not, that's that's technically true, although two of them are just painted versions of the other two. Okay. I mean, that's. You mean skews? Like yeah, they're five like five different... distinct items. I'm like, well, sort of. <laughs> you know, mm. the two of them are painted. Okay. But they, so they have the Age of Annihilation Master Set. Okay. So this has 20 highly detailed unpainted miniatures with a paint wash. So at least there's a paint wash. So that's not bad. Nine scenarios, 330 hexes, blah blah blah. One of the things I noticed when they went over to different characters is they, they kind of killed what Hasbro was doing. Hasbro was like all fantasy. They're definitely doing across time and space, which Good. HeroScape was initially. Like, yeah. there's a you uh, there's like a military soldier in there, and there was a cowboy, and that's what I want. Good, absolutely, okay. yeah, that's what this is. And then uh, the next, let's see, let's go to the next slide. We have several slides to show this one off. Then they have the battle for the Wellspring Battle Box. This is more stuff. Um, this has six more miniatures with some water tiles. Okay. okay. I guess those are the miniatures you see on there. I did watch a little bit of it. It was a really long uh, video, but this one looks a little more fantasy than the other ones. And Did then you can buy. Painted? Well, that's the thing. You can get it unpainted or painted. Okay. That's why they're saying there's five products. The Got third it. product, which is not painted or unpainted, is just trees. It's called okay. the Groves at Lara's Edge. That's why I feel like it's almost disingenuous for them to be like, there's five things. No, no one's going to buy five. Not, right. You're going to buy three. You're going to buy the two unpainted. or the. Yeah. You're not going to buy the unpainted and the painted. That makes no, it sound correct, like right. everything is five boxes. No, everything is three boxes. It's yes, just these that's, three. That's correct. Yeah. So they show, here's the next thing. It will show you a picture of a of their painted edition. And the... Um, well, that's interesting. And the washed one. And the washed one doesn't look that bad. I really think that's interesting. that They are going more for like a, um, a highlighted... Or I guess a washed look in this case, but yeah, it almost well, they, looks like it's been dry brushed even. They look you know? like the miniatures in Unmatched, I'm guessing. Unmatched one, has that sort of like quick wash right. to give us some detail. This one looks a little bit more stark than that. Like, you know, it might but, just be the rendering. But it could be the rendering. I do I think that would be interesting if the ones on the left, the washed ones, were painted, I'm sorry, were primed with washed and not sealed because then, like, they cut out those steps and could get right into painting. But I think that's a very small percentage of people, namely just me. I don't that. know that there's going to be a big crossover between people who paint necessarily and people who play HeroScape. I think so, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. No, I agree with you. I, I don't think. HeroScape, the thing was, especially if you have any of the old HeroScape stuff and you want to mix them, having unpainted miniatures is just going to look tacky. It just will. Yeah. It, it will just look weird. Yeah. yeah. And although I will say the paint jobs in these new ones look superior to those, I mean, the HeroScape paint jobs were never great. Sure. Um, so the pricing difference here, so I'm on their pre-order page, so the Wellspring's 45, it's 65 to get it painted. I'd pay 20 bucks for six painted miniatures. Oh, yeah. Straight up. So these are not hand painted then, they're, you know, manufactured, right? Oof. I assume so. Now, yeah, but there's a big difference though between the, 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 the Master Sets 125 to 225. A hundred dollars for the painted minis. Well, there's a lot more minis in that one. Yeah. The yeah. terrain comes that dual color regardless, right? Yeah. Okay. The terrain the looks like the tan the terrain. with the green on yeah. top. Okay. The thing where people are going oof is on this is it's 125 when HeroScape was sold for 45, the original one, but yeah, or, or 225 ago. I guess painted, but it was also 20 years ago and plastic has gone up considerably. Either way, to be fair, so has the quality of it. I'm sure you know the plastic and such. It's gonna, you were talking about Probably. how it's going to feel better. I assume it's also going to be. It looks like better. everything is completely backwards compatible, mm. which is good. Wow. I have, my cautious optimism is now up to just optimism. I'm not mm. super excited yet, but I want to wait and see it. And I haven't yet got rid of my HeroScape stuff, although it would save a space in the studio if I did. 
We could have another recording space if you did. It's that much. <laughs> <laughs> you want a recording space in the bathroom? <clears throat> you, no. Okay. Let's move on. Moving on, here we have <coughs> Mega Empires is yes. being oh. uh, done with uh, Ares Games and Colossus Games. So Mega Empires is already, or one of them's already out. I think it's Western Empires. Oh, Wait for and the Eastern East. Empires. I'm I'm not sure which ones are out. We have one of these type games in the library. You can buy both to put them together to make some giant game. So it's three to nine players. Oh. But if you get both of them, you can have 18 players, and it takes 12 hours. Is this a mega game or just a big, big It Euro is a mega game? game. Well, no, it, it's a big, giant Civ game. Good Got news, it. though, there will be some shorter well, scenarios from 120 minutes up. Wow. This is okay. So uh, I'm reading a here. niche product. This is a mm -hmm. reprint of Mega Civ. We actually have Mega Civ in our library. Okay, so it is that. Okay. That was 999 Games did it in 2015. And that was based on Civilization, which came out ages ago. So now they're dividing it into two smaller games. Or though they, they divide it into two smaller games. Western Empires in 2019 and Eastern Empires in 2021. That sold out. So they started a new company to bring these back. So they look... I feel like they're the same thing here, almost. I wonder what the differences are. Why put this in two boxes? I get that you want the people, basically, to buy it in pieces. Yeah, how many people do you think buy just one? I think a lot of people probably buy just one. Play it and then go, ooh, we can yes. make a big, big version and then buy the other. I, I, I would that's say why that, you too. Do, that's why you do this. I would take your bet that most people buy both. If you're, if you're in this, you're in for a penny and for a pound. I'm not playing no 12-hour game, half of it. We're doing everything. You think so? Do you I've think only they ever seen this at conventions. It just makes the sting a little easier to be like, I'll buy one. Later, I'll buy the other. And you feel better about that rather than being like, right. there's $250. Because they don't know. Well, I guess that's a good point. How many people are getting into it for the first time? Or is this people replacing Oof. a copy? Yeah, that's a good point, too. I don't know about that. Okay, RuneScape Kingdoms is released. I know it's released because I just saw it on Amazon. I went and looked it up. This is a dungeon crawl type game from Steamforge that looks um, it looks particularly not as complicated as some. It looks more complicated than HeroScape, for example, but not as complicated as a lot of modern dungeon crawls. What is this? RuneScape. It's a little picture. It's an MMORPG. Um, MMORPG says Oh, is this Roy. based on oh. that? It's based on RuneScape, yeah. Oh, wow. Based on RuneScape. Do people still play RuneScape? I mean, do people online still... they do, yeah. Online they do, says Roy. Here, I'll show you some pictures. The, the people aren't, aren't going to see them, but the game looks like that. So it doesn't look... I mean, it obviously there's a lot of cards and stuff, but the board and everything, it doesn't look as complex. Okay. What is, is it? RPG? Is it? No, you no, said it's, it's an MMO. Oh, sorry. Okay. Actually, it looks like an adventure game and not yeah. a dungeon crawl. Yeah, it does. Yeah. This and is and, an and old the price isn't too game, bad. Though? It's 70 bucks. No, it's brand new from Steamforged. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting that it's okay. right to retail, right? I would have got one and then I thought, how many dungeon crawls do we need? Yeah. All right. Or adventure games. All right. Ulta Match. Don't love this, this name. Oof. It's a cooperative card game that's similar to the mind and the game. Um, there's 48 cards, one to eight, and six suits. Looks like 10 for 10. You set up a pyramid with five or six rows. The bottom row being face up looks like solitary. You have to remove all the cards in the pyramid before everyone has to pass in a turn. So to remove a card, you have to discard one or two cards from your hand and match cards in the middle, and that's all the rules I'm going to read. Because so for you know for someone saying this game is super easy, there's quite a few there's paragraphs here. Yeah. Is this a remake of that cup game? I don't think so because it's cooperative, and that cup game was not. Also, that cup game is one of the worst games I've ever played. All is right. that not cooperative? I guess you're right. Yeah. Mayfair Games. So we talked about Mayfair Games. Mayfair Games was bought by Asmodee, and Asmodee they slit their throats in the back alley. Oh. Whoa. Two houses. You don't have the newest version Ooh. of this file. Ooh. When did you change it? Because I opened it like 30 minutes ago. Oh. Nah. Uh, I don't know. Is Anyhow. Oh. No, it's uh, no big deal. But Mayfair bought Lookout Games. Anyway, Mayfair's been bought by Mr. B Games. We've already talked about them a bit because yep, yep. they have uh, the Ace of Aces. That was on our Kickstarter show. That's right. That's crowd right. surfing. They also have the train games. Um... Age of Empires, 
Not Age of Empires. Oh, you're talking about um. Ah, jeez. Russian. The, the crayon games. Why am the I crayon not? Games, <laughs> the crayon games. The crayon train games. Aha. Maybe it says it here. Oh, it got fixed. I closed and opened it. Empire Builder. Thank you. I don't know why it's Empire uh, Builder. Empire right. Builder. So they're going to be republishing those and they're republishing Dragon's Dawn and American Mogul here. I do wish. So this is Mr. B who's doing this, but it's from Mayfair's catalog. Is yeah. Is that what's happening? They also got mm. Weapons of Mass Destruction from oh, Flying Buffalo. Oh, that is a terrible game. So this is kind of a weird thing. <laughs> Mr. B, Mr. B is like buying up old companies. But don't worry, folks. They're keeping the old crappy look alive. I, I don't get this. Like, buy these old games. I don't care. They make them look great. That Dragon's Dawn looks like it's from the 70s. Yeah, with the guy in the clouds and the... Ah, yeah, that's... Even American Mogul looks like, don't buy me. That guy, that yeah. guy will be, I guess, he is not amused. You know, I don't know. I just, I, I just wish these things looked better. Maybe the components will look great. We'll see. Yeah, there's a lot also, between nostalgia and bringing it up to Weapons of Mass Destruction is a very bad game. <laughs> you said that several times. I said it twice, but I will say it again if you'd like. Say it again. It's a terrible game, <laughs> Weapons of Mass Destruction. I rate that bad boy, I think, a one or a two. Wow. Well. One it's funny, though, because the designer ever. and publisher of that game, Rick Loomis, he was the president of Gamma for basically till he decided he didn't want to be president anymore. Right, he, right. And he was always at Origins with a booth selling that game like for years and years. He sold two things, that and the rubber bands that held box covers together. Mm -hmm. And then he passed away, and I was like, all right, it's time to let this game kind of fade out. But now it's still around. A lot of people have nostalgia for this weapons of mass destruction because, you know, hey, who doesn't remember the fun of nuclear war? Let's move on. Chateau Combo. This is, um, this, this is from uh, Gregory Gard and Matau Rossell. It's from the same people who made a game called Far Away. Oh, oh super got excited. It. Yeah, so this is from Catch Up Games, and this looks pretty good. Uh, where you will be replacing cards one run row and putting them in another row. It looks, it's a 20, 30 minute game for two to five players. I kind of like that art. Feels it feels like a different style. I kind of like the art. I don't really that cover. I'm gonna my eyes are gonna kind of look right over it. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited for this game. I like these designers, and and the last game is one of my favorites. Mm. All right, then we have another game from one of the designers of Turing Machine called Temple Code. This is a game of one to four players that Bank Kilts Editions is releasing this May, which is not too far away. He was telling me a little bit about this game uh, when I saw him at Dice Tower West. Mm -hmm. So it's another one of those games, you know, it's another one of his games that have these machines. He's done three. Uh, he's done Turing Machine. Then he did Arca... Archeo Archaeologic. Archaeologic. Yeah. And so this one looks like the third one. It looks like he likes that sort of thing. So you're trying to figure out the right positions for hidden cards. <laughs> This one I looks a little you, simpler. I'll tell you right now, even though it does look a little simpler, I'm probably too dumb for this game. That's how I feel. That's Agreed. How I feel about yeah, several yeah. Of these, like, you know what I mean? Oof, I, if my at mind does not no work one, this at way. At least as long as no yeah. one agrees with me. Wait, what? So anyhow, Ink It is our next game. Oh. So there's always some new, some new way to get mm. people to guess something, right? <laughs> this Seriously? This one you're using ink stamps. <laughs> Stamp a drawing or guess it. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. The, the thing is, though, I mean, this is obviously a gimmick-type game. Maybe it's good, but, I mean, you could accomplish the same thing by putting, like, six circles, six triangles, and six of the yellow things in a box and saying... Which we've yeah. had that game. I right. Mean, that game came know. out back in People like stamps. Your kids are going to get them all over their hands. Oh, yeah. No, I think that this is interesting. It does make that you have to be creative with it. How do you put the shapes together, you know, instead of just freehand drawing? No, I think that this is, mm. is interesting. Mm, disagree. I'll well, I think the, Far Away sucks. I'm going to wait so. for the re-theme <laughs> with a Kraken on the cover and called Sink It. You don't like Far Away? Mm -mm. <gasps> I find it super It needs more fine. stamps, right? All right, our next game is called Stalk Exchange. Let's go. 
I actually like the name of this one. I normally don't love puns, but this one I was amused by. It looks like a Lego flower bouquet on the front. Well, you would not like this one probably because it is a stock exchange with flowers. <sighs> um, yes. It looks... It looks promising. I won't say it looks great because it, that picture is a little far away, but I'm definitely interested in this one. It looks very old, also. This is coming from this the op, prototype. Actually. Well, I'm sure it is a prototype, actually. But it but looks, it, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's oh, not we... even that. I feel like I just came across like an old picture from Bruno Faduti's Gathering of Friends from '98 or something. Mm -hmm. It has that look of like, ooh, that's new? It has that look. Is this game in stock? It, it is indeed. <laughs> All right. Oh, jeez. And that, that's coming from the app. Another game coming from the app is Gnome Hollow. Now, this game has been getting insane amounts of buzz. I've heard about this, Like, yeah. I don't know that I've heard a game get this much buzz in oh, a long time. Okay. Like, from the, the behind it. I know that publishers were fighting over the rights to print this. I do oh, know really? that. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? It is a two to four game from a brand new designer, Ammon Anderson, who did, I believe, the art and the design. Okay. And you're okay. forming mushroom rings. It, I mean, if you just showed me this game and told me the thing, I was like, eh, I don't, I don't really care. But again, I've had probably 10 different people tell me it's amazing. Okay. I've, I've heard about it. I, I have never seen it or anything, but like Gnome Hollow is like, yeah, I've heard about it four or five times probably. There's wow. There's definitely buzz around also it. Also, it has magnetic player boards and pieces, so people are going to like that. Oh, I'm in. Um, so this is coming also from the app, and this will also be debuting at Gen Con. Wow. A lot for the app. Interesting. It looks Agricola-ish. There's something about it. If you told me... Whose game is this, actually? I'd be like, I don't know, um, uh, Rosenberg, you know, has that look a little yeah. bit. Yeah, Interesting. that's a good call. We shall see. All right. I'm very excited about this next news. The op is also reprinting 10 days in USA. Hey. Yes, finally. And also, this fits their line perfectly. Uh, have you ever played this? I'm not, no. Have you ever played um, Racco? Yes, a lot of Racco. So yeah. this is a little bit like Racco. Except, you, so you get a bunch of tiles in front of you, 10 tiles, mm -hmm. and you need to rearrange them so that you can make a trip from one to the other. So the states have to be next to each other, or if you put an airplane, you can fly from one red state to another oh, red state or a green state to a green state. And so that's all you, that's all you do in your turn is you, the, the board itself doesn't mean anything. It's just there so you know. It's a player aid pretty much. Yeah, it's I a mean, player yeah. aid. That's right. And on your turn, yeah. you draw a tile, put it in your rack, and discard one. And that's cool. This is my, one of my wife's favorite games. This is one I was looking for when I was homeschooling, but was never able to get my hands on a copy. So I think this is really cool. Yeah, the company Absolutely. went out of business, out of the box publishing. There's been a couple nice versions printed by Broadway from China. Um, they're Korean, I thought. Broadway. No, they're not. They might be Taiwanese, actually. Okay. I um, no, Broadway's not Korean. Um, and then, but it hasn't been in America for a long time. So mm -hmm. there's actually five. This is great. Five. There's there's also ten days in Europe, ten days in South America, mm -hmm. ten days in Asia, ten days in Africa, and USA. Yeah, and then USA. So there's five. I was hoping that they would eventually have made eight, so you could play eighty days around the world. Oh. My wife and I one time in a moment of insanity played forty days. We took four of them, and you had to get all forty, and you would just use wow. an airplane to fly from like a red state of like Arkansas, and then fly to red J Japan. That's amazing. Oh, wow. You can do that. We tried it. It works. It also takes like two hours to play the game. That's okay, though. I mean, wow. it's like a cool experience. That's, that's, that's kind of really cool. neat. I like that. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, oh, hopefully this cool. means they're, they're printing all of them. I am curious um, that, that this game is still being able to be reprinted considering the designers no longer work together. But, oh, because it's Alan Moon and Aaron Weisblum, right? Right, and they no longer work together. But I guess they like, each. Hey, hey, you want some money? Here's I guess some they money. can each. They don't have to develop anything. They can each just be like, sure, reprint it. Where's sure, money? which Where's probably means check? we won't yeah. see anything other than the ones already designed. Right. Right. Got it in a new content, yeah. Still, so, if there's five of them, that's pretty good. That's cool. Bring it back. This gonna make a lot sure. of people happy. Avatar: The Last Bender, Aang's Dynasty is coming Last out. Airbender. Airbender. People will tear you what apart. did I say? The Last Bender. Did I say the last bender? Did, yeah. Sorry, the airbender. I don't know. That, that was a slip of the tongue. I, I, know, I know a little bit here. Um, this is um, supposed to be very similar to Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. 
a oh, cooperative deck building game. Interesting. So it'll be seven bucks of unlockable playing material, blah, blah, blah. This is also from the op, I'm guessing. Yeah, there's a lot of op stuff. But I think this 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 should sell like uh, gangbusters. Oh, for sure. And it's also a solid game. Like, I played... I like the Harry Potter one fine. I really like the Toy Story one. Um, which is Toy based Story on that one. same system. Okay, interesting. Well, I didn't know they had that. The Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle is one of my son's favorite games. Um, and he went through a phase of Avatar here as well, so I'm sure he'll be yeah. excited about this. All right, Flip 7 is a card game which the box says on it, the greatest card game of all time. Oof. Wow, finally. <laughs> I know. I've been also, waiting, honestly. It's been a long time, but I've been waiting for the greatest card game of all time. I will say, though, I love the design of these cards. The way they I, look like tickets, it's fantastic. No, I think it's They're actually cool. a really good-looking box, and the cards are great. Yeah. This look. might be the greatest card game of all time. Tell me about the game itself. It's a pressure luck game. Oh. You have I'm cards number right. from 1 to 12 with 1, 1, 2, 2s, etc. Okay. You're going to flip a card in your row, and you can stop and bank your points or flip again. But if you flip a number that's already face up, you lose all the cards. So it's pairs. Cool. Is that what pairs is? More or less. All right. This it looks really cute. This next one's exciting. Smirk and Dagger is reprinting a game from uh, Brazil. Uh, and the design, Andre Teruya Eichenberg, and it's called Hi-Fi. And I know Robert had his hands in it from Comic-Coners mm. um, a little bit. This game, oh, man. That is a cool looking. He gave me the rule book. I, you, can, you, you can see the rule book just above the guy's hand there in the picture. It's it under, looks like a Rolling it, Stone cover. Yeah, it looks like a Rolling oh, that Stone cover, and that's the rule book. Okay. It's really cool. That's cool. I hate that board. I mean, so I get what it is. You're actually like, going to spin that record's rondelle to choose an action within your reach, or you can spend points to take another action. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to put audio cards to five studio tracks. I'm telling you, the theme of this alone is has me really drooling over it. I'm hoping the game is as good. That's I, cool. Hmm. I saw the rule book, did not see the game. They okay. didn't have it when I was there in Brazil. Who is this, you said? <coughs> reprinting Smirk and Dagger smirk of all dagger. people. That I wasn't expecting. Are they still Smirk and Laughter slash no, Smirk and No, he decided dagger. that that was confusing and causing problems, so they're just Smirk and Dagger. Just Smirk and Dagger, okay. That's cool. cool. Hmm. Smirk and Dagger also has a cash cow in our hands with Boop, so let's make this more. Really, yeah, this has been a yeah. hit. This has been Boop a hit. is possibly one of the top ten selling games from last year. Or Boop. And now they got Boop with hats. So yeah. they're following a the patchwork thing. I'm sure we'll see Valentine Boop at some point. Valen Boop. Anyway, this one this one actually looks fairly different than the other ones here with a, this 3D board. But it says you can win a game by booping three of your cats in a row. But now you can also play as a jerk cat, which is uh, basically repeating the same word twice, that pushes your Christmas opponent's ornaments onto the floor so they break. <laughs> Pretty good. If you if you break their ornaments three times, you win the game. Mm. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> Summoner Wars is online. Let's go. Oh, coming to a what's happening near say, you? Yeah, what's and it happening? looks like it looks like. We just reviewed a couple new factions. It looks like those factions are already in the app, which is pretty amazing. Really? Yeah. So that's cool. Let's go. It says you walk through the basics of gameplay, and new players will receive a free faction deck. And you can enjoy a free-to-play faction deck that rotates every week. That's good. I, I think that's a good thing that these oh. Dominion does that. I like that idea. Like, I here, agree. play with this. You like it, you want to keep it, you can buy it, but you can mess around with it. Yeah. They actually have taken That's that cool. idea from, I believe, League of Legends does that, where you play these different characters, and it's free. League of Legends is free to play, and most of their money comes from skins, of, you know, things. Yeah, but also, sure. you can only play so many people, but you pay, and then you can play this person all the time. Yeah. And I'd be like, well, I want to play this person all the time. That's interesting. That's cool. Dude, Imperium Digital's out. You played this one, I think? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. How did it go? I know that. Very well. It's a great implementation. You oh. you expect that from this company, oh, and, cool. and it delivers. Is that a what's happening? You did it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, the good that. news Excellent. is it was on Steam Early Access, mm -hmm. but now it's out, as of yesterday, on iOS and Android. 
Wonderful. That's yeah, I cool. played on Steam actually. Yeah, but I'm definitely gonna play on. I, I'm looking forward oh, to it. Oh, you did? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I believe I played through Steam. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then finally in the news, and I'm sure, like I said, there's been a ton of things announced, so we'll probably have some overflow until next week, different oh. things. Mass Effect. This is from Modifius here, designed by Eric Lang and Kevin Wong Saloon. Wow. Um, I, this is one of those things where I know about Mass Effect, obviously, it's a very big game, but I don't know much more than that. I've never played it. Have like you? a video yeah. game? or a, Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I played the whole trilogy. It's one of the biggest video games wow. of all time, actually. I've never heard of it. Yes. But not shocking at all. But. Uh, do you like do you like do you like Mass Effect? I do. Mass Effect is very very good. It's a great setting. It's a it's a great. It's like an epic sci-fi world with lots of interesting alien races. Great plot. Great twists. Yeah, this is really I really, really good stuff. I like the look of that. Like that's the sci-fi setting. You know that I would. Or space setting, you know, that I would want. Yeah, it's really cool. Pretty cool. At. All right, so anyway, Modiphius, you like some Modiphius other stuff? Too, they did yeah. um, the Thunder. Thunderbirds game is Thunderbirds. theirs. They also then came out with um, the Double O Seven game. What is it? Spectre is also from them. I never ah. did play that. Mm. But that was them too. Well, Asmodee they, will be yeah. distributing this one later cool. this year, so it's coming mm. out. That's cool. I would not be surprised if this is another Gen Con release. It's yeah. later this year, so we're getting into those announcements, aren't we? Yeah. We are. Very nice. Very nice. So that is some of the news. <laughs>